So let's look at WPA3 Enterprise next. So just to recap dot uh, one next process, as you can see, uh, after the initial association, client has to go through a process called EAP exchange process. So that involve uh, multiple packet exchange between the radius server and the supplicant. This is just to authenticate the user to the radius server as well as authenticating the radius server to the user. So uh, once uh, we do this particular process as part of the frame, we are exchanging the uh, key information just to derive a master session key. So in that way, the key exchange happen as part of the EAP communication. So at the end of the EAP communication, you will have a master session key as well. So this master session key will be hand over to the uh, controller and controller calculating a PMK and hand over that PMK to the access point. So supplicant also derive the PMK from the master session key. So applicant, supplicant and the AP has a uh, PMK. So then they can go through a process called four way handshake and they will derive the key. So in the WPA two perspective, we had a look, you know, like pretty much the standard process. There are no difference. Uh, only thing is, you know, like certain thing like a protocol management frame, those features has not been mandatory. So because of that, it is easy to uh, in, uh, do a denial of service by an adversary. So uh, in the WPA3, they enhance that, you know, like protected management frame has been mandatory. And then if you really want the highest level of security, there's something called 192 bit mode. So that has been introduced in WPA3. So that is the highest level of security where you can go. So that 192 bit mode, little bit, uh, if you want to know the detail, this is like, uh, commercial uh, network security agency. So they uh, implemented certain sort of protocol suite just to minimum giving the 192 bit strength in the encryption, authentication uh, and uh, integrity point of view. They have defined certain algorithm. So then if you want to uh, implement um, highest level of security, you have to follow one of these uh, CNSA uh, algorithm. So now if you look at the AKM table given below, uh, you will see the AKM number 12 is CNSA compliant. So in that way, if you are implementing 192 bit mode, you will see the AKM value 12 being in use. So now if you look at the, again, uh, whatever the different mode of WPA3 enterprise de deployment, you will see three different mode. So what we call first one is the WPA3 enterprise mode, uh, which is uh, AKM value 5. So AKM value 5 is dot one next with chart 256. So in that one management, if management frame protection has been mandatory in this uh, value AKM, and then it is what we call WPA3 enterprise. So then in this particular scenario, client should not basically, or even AP not should not support uh, AKM value one, which is the traditional dot one X with SHA one. So now just for the make the WPA three implementation easy for today, uh, they have always introduced the transition mode, all the security. So you were now difference to the WPA three. So that also have a transition mode. What we are doing normally advertising multiple AKM one AKM with the WPA three uh, enterprise and uh, one AKM for the traditional one. So if you are doing that, what they're saying is you need to advertise at least AKM value one and five because five is WPA three enterprise. Um, the one is a traditional WPA two enterprise. But in this particular case, if you are using both method, you cannot enforce a uh, protected management frame uh, or for all the client. So what you can do is you will set the management frame required bit set to one zero the capable bit to one. So in that way, the WPA three capable client come, he will negotiate PMF. If it is a legacy client come, he will ignore that and he will go ahead and connect to the AKM value one traditional dot one next without uh, worrying about PMF. So earlier we discussed about that CNSA compliant uh, AKM value. So that is what we call WPA three enterprise 192 bit mode. So in that particular mode, we uh, specifying uh, 
uh, radius server has to pick a uh, cypress suite that match that 192 bit criteria so in here they given the three uh, cypress suite method they can choose if you look at all this particular thing uh, uh, integrity point of view sha384 which is 192 bit strength and then uh, uh, encryption point of view we are using 256 bit encryption which is more the higher security than the 192 and the uh, uh, the akm uh, authentication and key management perspective as well they are using a certain sort of uh, elliptical curved defi hellman groups or even traditional defi hellman group uh, we have the right sort of uh, key strength so elliptical curve perspective minimum you need to have a 256 bit and uh, rsa or traditional point of view you need to have a 3072 bit key length so addition to that all this particular method supporting uh, certificate server validation so this is a one thing uh, wpa3 enterprise they have mandated so client cannot say do not validate the server so in that way that option has been removed by the should be removed by the client because you should not give the option to client to uh, bypass this particular uh, server validation process now let's look at the packet capture uh, in the wpa3 enterprise so in this packet capture actually taken whenever the uh, 192 bit mode has been implemented so that mean the akm value number 12 if you look at the uh, rsn information element you will see the akm number 12 so now if you look at the broadcast data and unicast data encryption it is the cypher suite number nine if you look at the uh, cypher suite for encryption uh, number nine you can see it is gcmp 256 so then that way this is you know the encryption meeting the criteria of 192 bit now if you look at the uh, two bits uh, rsn uh, capability information you will see the pmfr is bit set to one mfp capable set to one as well so which mean we are implementing the management frame protection so if it is one both one you need to specify what group management cypress we using for uh, protecting those frame so that is also you can see here in the diagram it is saying the value 12 if you look at the table value 12 is bip gmac 256 that mean we are using broadcast integrity protocol with the gmac and 256 bit key length so if it is a wpa3 enterprise only capture you will see the akm value 5 but if you look at the wpa3 enterprise transition you should see akm value 1 and 5 because that is the dot traditional dot 1x and the uh, wpa3 compliant uh, akm value so now this is a packet capture a bit more detail as we said you know like uh, in this particular mode radius server will be very strict you know like radius server has a three choice to choose from and then in this particular instance client saying client can do this particular two method and then the radius server will pick a one method but if a client come up with a method that not complying with those three e cypher suite then connection will be fail so those information goes in the client hello and the server hello uh, so let me just uh, go to the packet capture and explaining this uh, process so this is the packet capture what you got for the uh, mrn uh, wpa3 e packet capture so now if i go to the beacon frame you will see in the rsn information element you can see the same thing which we had to look akm value is number 12 so then the pairwise cipher and group cipher you can see here gcmp 256 gcmp 256 that means we, we are using aes 256 keys with the galova counter mode and then rsn capability if you look at you will see the both protection required and capable bit to set to true because of that you need to specify which protocol you are using for uh, broadcast integrity protocol so it is again number 12 that's called gmac uh, 256 bit keys being used so now if you look at the uh, client association process let me just filter by client mac address so if you capture and client mac address so this m1 is coming from the ap and m2 is going from the client so in that way 
M2 this should be the client address and if you go to the frame exchange and change the MAC address value so you will see the client association now if you scroll down further you will see the EAP exchange process so now this is the part uh, WPA203 so in this particular case AP asking to identity and then AP responding client responding and then radius server uh, AP basically asking let's go through the TLS process so whenever we ask that client will be sending a client hello so that is where the client will be listing it is capabilities so if we look at the client hello here you will see the it is listing the cypher suite it is going to support so in these two methods they're saying I'm supporting these thing and less uh, RSA and elliptical curve digital signature algorithm for the AKM perspective so whenever the radius server responding with the server hello it's pick the uh, digital signature algorithm AKM method so this is one of the compliant method for the uh, WPA3 enterprise with this one radius server will be sending it is uh, certificate uh, it is sending it is certificate and if you want to look at the detail of the certificate you can see here this is my test environment which I have basically get a radius certificate for this and if you want to check the validity of this certificate you can sign certificate and validity you can say how long this is valid on this particular case that like a two year certi certificate it got and so like that uh, you will have the cert server certificate information because now we are doing a uh, so it, uh, you remember I said you know like the in, in inside this particular EAP exchange frame we are exchanging a key information so that way if you look at the server key exchange detail you can see here Defi Hellman parameter you will see the public key so this is the server public key server is sending so that way and then server is requesting client to send a certificate so because this is a TLS client should have a certificate so in that way uh, requesting a client uh, certificate and then they send server hello is done and you will get the client certificate here so in that way if you look at the client certificate as well if you expanding you will see a client will be sending a certificate you know client certificate that also signed by a certificate authority so it has also validity period this particular case it is lo look like this certificate has been expired now this is all capture which I have taken um, so if that's why it is important now this client trying to connect now with this particular certificate it will failing why because the current certificate is not valid um, so now it's sending certificate it's also sending the client key exchange so client key exchange is the one uh, get its public key you can see here client key exchange client sending the client public key so now uh, if you are exchanging a public keys that is good enough to derive the shared secret key which is what we call master session key uh, derived by the radius server and the supplicant so once you do that then basically once you verification the server certificate and change the cypher spec uh, that means we are saying that now we are good so let's go into the uh, um, we can basically go into the TLS mode because we validate each other and shared secret has been derived so now uh, then the server confirming that and then uh, we are basically finishing the EAP TLS establishment. So now with this method and then you know like once you have a PMK, a PMK means client can calculate the PMK, radius server send in the master session key to the controller, controller calculate PMK and hand over it to the uh, uh, AP. So once you have a uh, PMK, you can traditionally go through the four-way handshake so this is a m1 message a nonce value and then this is the s nonce value supplicant sending that but supplicant sending rs information inside that message and then the m3 gtk value goes here but this time there are no way to validate the gtk why because we cannot decrypt in this particular traffic so now final message is confirmation message uh, coming from the client and now if you look at this 
particular packet or there could this could be dhcp discovery message because we can think it's a broadcast frame so then but still you cannot know where to basically identify what type of addresses client got all this particular detail because traffic being encrypted so that's uh, the wpa3 enterprise <coughs> so to, just to recap what we getting so protected management frame is mandatory if you are implementing a wpa3 mode either wpa3 enterprise only mode or wpa3 uh, 192 bit mode so if you want to go the transition mode then where you will be advertising multiple akm value so one has to be wpa3 capable akm and one has to be the traditional akm value so in this particular scenario you keep a pmf required bit to zero and pmf capable bit to one so that way wpa3 enterprise client negotiating pmf the other client basically ignoring the pmf so that is the what uh, wpa3 about so now what we we'll go do next is actually go to the enhance open